Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, we are afternoon, back everybody. yet again. We are back yet again. And today we have with us Miss Melanie. We Gessie. have with us Miss Melanie. Crochet by Mel. Crochet by Mel. Hi, Mel. Hi, Mel. Hi. Tell us a little about yourself Tell and us your a business. Tell about yourself and your business. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. My name is Melanie Desi, and I am the proud owner of Crochet by Mel also known as Crochet by Melly Boo. I am a born Antiguan. I have lived in St. Johnson's Village for most of my life. I don't know anything other than Antigua because this is all I know. Um, <laughs> I'm a very creative person. My love for crochet started from way back in grade five. I used to go to St. John's Catholic School and in grade five, we started doing knitting in arts and craft. And then from grade five straight through secondary school, I always used to knit just for stress reliever. People always used to call me grandma. I don't know why, but it was just fun for me. It was a stress reliever. A day I was sitting on on my gallery and this lady passed and she saw me knitting. So she approached me, she's like, do you know how to crochet? I'm like, what is that? She showed me a pin, like a one pin. You know, um, knitting has a two needles, a two long needles with a ball of yarn. So everything mm -hmm. gets done with that mm -hmm. two needles. Mm -hmm. She shows me this one needle and she shows me, um, I think it was a wedding dress she did with it. And I was just out of my mm -hmm. mind. I was like, how did you get all that? with one needle so she sat down there she taught me a couple of techniques i learned the basics um i took that throughout a couple of years and then i came to work at the library when i came to work at the library in 2016 a day i was just sitting down on my break and i had a needle and my yarn on me so i said let me just do something i went on youtube and i saw a little toy a little key ring toy and I tried it out. I came the next day and I showed my coworker. She said, oh my gosh, you did that? You did that? You did that? And I'm like, yeah. I didn't know I could do toys. I mean, everybody takes crochet as the, the doilies and the chair backs and the bathroom mat sets and stuff like that. So I'm like, this is pretty cool because I love stuffed toys. I love toys. I am a grown up, but I love toys. I am so happy that I have a kid now so that I could like use that have as an, an excuse. excuse. Have an excuse. Yes. So I started making toys, just different little things. And I every time I made a toy, I took a picture of it. And the more I did it, the better I got. Because I am a freak for details. Like for example, I made this little mm -hmm. elephant for my daughter. And mm -hmm. it has a lot of little intricate details. I mean toys normally you would see the toys and they're like, okay, it's, it's an elephant. But then, like this one has the little sunflower. And you can see mm -hmm. just by looking at it is the little sunflower. And then it has the little thing to wrap up on the nose. Mm -hmm. So for me, what got me more yeah, interested in crochet was... Very complicated. It, it looks so, but it's, it's the detail that gets me going. My love for toys, one, the fact that I am so bomb at it, because every time I finish a toy, I look back on it and I'm like, I did that. So it's just, it's just the creative part of it. No, I don't do the toys out of my head. Normally I get patterns like this little fella here. Oops, sorry. So this is a pattern. This is what the end results would look like. And this is what the pieces look like because no you don't just take up one piece of thread and get everything done at once that's like a little arm this is the body it's like everything is just detailing and that is my favorite part of it nice Nice. Very nice. I mean, very nice. I mean, as a crochet myself, I as a crochet myself, I did not have to work getting pieces. 
Oh, so heard that oh. you happen to teach a class so at her. the public library. Is that still ongoing? That you happen to teach a class. At the public library, is that still ongoing? Well, at the moment, because of the COVID situation, we have had to put a pause on it. Even though my students are like, when are we starting? When are we starting? Unfortunately, we are not at the moment. But before the COVID, mm. I had mm. successfully completed around six classes, six different groups even though I had a couple of ladies that really liked it. So we kind of made it into a class and a little club at the same time. Um, to be completely honest with you, before that little teaching thing came about, I have never taught anybody how to crochet. I had like three um, test classes, which got me comfortable enough to put together a curriculum. Yes, I'm very detailed. Everything I have to do it has to be structured. So I finally put together a little curriculum and I taught one of my coworkers, ergo friends, and she ended up being another teacher, which even made me more proud because I'm like, I'm a very shy person. For me to sit down in a group of people and, and talk, it's like- who taught. Taught someone who taught. Yes. That's awesome. So that's awesome. Can that class, a lot because of people Amanda, have been interested Amanda, in it. This delay, I'm so sorry. This I apologize. delay, I'm so sorry. I apologize. It's okay. You were saying continue. You were saying continue. No, I was saying that the class, a lot of people have been interested in it, and a lot of ladies have done the class and end up making little projects, always sending me pictures ever so often of gifts that they give to their friends and their family. And it's always nice to see, you know, that, that comeback. Because it's one thing to know that you can do something. But then when you are able to teach it or pass it on. And somebody once asked me if I, why am I teaching people to make toys? And I'm like, the one reason why I'm teaching people to make toys and crochet in general, it is for another person to get a skill. What is it? Why would it be so awesome for you to have a skill and then, God forbid, you die and you're gone with what you know? So, I mean, I pass it on so that other people can enjoy the craft that I enjoy. There's always something that I live by. In the Dominican Republic, there's like a little flea market. Let's call it that. There's like 20 people, one after the other. And out of those 20 people, maybe six, let's say they're selling apples. Six mm -hmm. of them, one after the other selling apples. And each and every one of them goes home and they have made a sale or they've made sales during the day. So that is one of the philosophies I live by. I'm like, why do I know what I know and somebody else can't learn what I know? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they can teach me stuff like... You had mentioned that you're a fellow crochet, and I know that. I absolutely love what you do, but I will never sit down and make the awesome things you make because that, that's not what I'm interested in. I mean, I think you might make a toy. I'm not sure if you have made toys before, but yeah, I'm pretty I sure toys. you won't I sit down. Do I do toys. I just do toys. Yeah, but then the passion or the, the dedication I would put into a toy would be like, eh, I'll go do you know, something that you're more interested in, bags and stuff like that, because you make awesome bags, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm more bags so and cool it is than just, your toys. That is my niche. So I teach the general crochet, and then if people yeah, want I'm to learn... Bags and cool than your toys. Yes. So it is, it's, it's just what I love. People always ask me to do bat suits mm -hmm. and, you know, the chair bags, the regular thing and crochet. I'm like, no, I'm sorry I can recommend who can make them for you, but I'm sticking to toys. That is my niche. Mm. But how did you make the jump from just crocheting for yourself and things that you love? But how did you make the jump from going over and saying, I can do this, I can start a business? I can do this, I can start. Start a business. Okay, you're breaking up. If you can repeat it one more time. Oh my. Oh my. 
how did you make the transition from how did you make the transition from personal to to I'm going to start I'm going to start business that is actually um somewhat of a funny story when i started doing it i didn't believe in myself let's put it in that context um as i said before i'm a little bit shy so anything i do is like eh, i'm not sure but i think that's what creative people always have to battle with so mm-hmm. my friends kept ordering stuff from me and every time they told me to do some thing i would do it because you know it's my friends and then when i give it to them they ended up you know keep asking me for prices and whatever the case is so little by little it started off as uh, it started off as a business it was more like a hobby so like when uh, my friend's birthday came around or you know little gifts i had to make little gifts sorry about that it was just me trying to bring out my creativity and enjoy my hobby and then my friends would word of mouth speak about me other people would come and order little things and then the more challenging it became the more excited i got to do the work and then um getting a quote unquote payday from it wasn't bad at all <laughs> so that was how it transitioned from a hobby to a business and i've always been business oriented because i'm like if you can make money from as the quote says use lemon to make lemonade why not and if it's something that you love to do you're going to do it to the best of your ability so that is how it went basically from as i said a hobby to a business i still treat it as a hobby because it puts more love into my pieces any time um i would think of it as work i find myself getting frustrated that is the sad yes. truth i i i feel that also people often ask me why i don't sell the things i make and that is one of the number one reasons <laughs> when i'm forced to do it people often, often ask me why fun. i don't sell the things i make and that is one of the number one reasons when i'm forced to do cast mm-hmm. it's not as fun but i mean as a full time worker at the public library and fun. a full time mom and a crocheter mm-hmm. where do you a find the time to work at, at the public library that. a full time mom and a crocheter where do you find how do you balance that well it has to do a lot with time management time management time management i can't stress that enough um i work a 9 to 5 job i work basically a 24 hour job being a mom and then you know the things that you have to do at home but it all has to do with time management why i mean it won't be if i have a toy like say the toy i just showed you the little um astronaut that toy i started yesterday maybe i do a couple of pieces during my break or when i find some time i could be sitting now having a conversation like now and i could be crocheting mm. i'm not showing off i'm just saying i could just do it without looking so mm-hmm. it's like i split certain jobs in a maximum maybe 2 or 3 days i would do the pieces and then take maybe a weekend maybe a couple of hours out of the weekend and stitch them together and put in the little and extra details. So if mm-hmm. I have maybe four toys to make, I will break it down into days. I might make the eight pairs of the sorry, four pairs of hand, four pairs of legs one day and then make the heads and you know just just split it down. Even mm-hmm. though if I'm really challenged, like this toy took me like four days. and the only reason it took me 4 days was because i was so excited to see the final product that i would be up all 2 3 o'clock in the morning trying to crochet and then remember hey you have to go work in the morning you know this is just I, I know that and <laughs> you know just knowing that you have things to do i i know that <laughs> but as as someone who is very crafty 
and living in Antigua, how <laughs> difficult is it for you to Someone source your material craft and, and living in Antigua? Okay, sorry. Go one more time. Oh, I was For a person that's crafty in and a person who's crafty. Where do you source your materials? Is it something that you buy locally, or do you have to import? Where do you use your materials? My materials are my materials are sourced from different sources. I get materials locally. Mm -hmm. and I order materials too. I am normally faced with the difficulties of finding the type of materials that I want locally. And most of the times I would have to order, like for instance, a set of, of eyes. These are not googly eyes, these are actually um, teddy bear eyes. These you will not find in Antigua anywhere whatsoever. Mm. Um, so these are the little things. So to add those little details, I would have to order my stuff. And it's kind of difficult. I mean, not kind of. Anybody that's creative here in Antigua struggles with that. That would be a reason for somebody wanting to quit what they're doing because of the lack of materials locally. And then when you order your things, unfortunately, you have to pay an arm and a leg to get them. And then that contributes to your prices going up for when people want things done. Um, for this craft, there's a lot of little tiny things that you need. Like a lot of people have seen the silver crochet hooks. Is silver? Yes, yeah, silver crochet hooks. And that's what they think a crochet hook is. But crochet hooks come in a different variety. So different toys, different sizes. So... Mm -hmm. Let's say they would have a range between a four millimeter and a five millimeter. I know a lot of people wouldn't know what that is, but that's just size range in. Here in Antigua, they would have those three basic size, but then in a case where I would have to work with jumbo yarn, I would need maybe a 10 millimeter between a 15 or whatever. You don't have that variety here, so that's where it becomes tough and tricky. Right. For those who don't know what Desi's talking right. about, for those talking who about, don't like, know what Desi's talking about, she's talking about like yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. And you will not find and I these have my here set at here. all. And you will not find these here at all. Nope, not even this. This is a kit that came with like all them little trinkets, and you cannot find that here. Yeah. Yeah. So. At the end of the day, your it's your passion that has to At drive you. At the end you. of the day, because your, it's, it's your passion, passion that has to drive you. Because so but what would you say is your most favorite you thing about this particular path you've chosen? About this particular path you've chosen. My absolute favorite thing about this passion is the person's reaction. The only thing I look forward to when I'm finished a toy is people might call it maybe the praise, but it's not the praise. It's just the energy people bring out. It's like, oh, my God, you did it. Like I had a client one time that brought a picture to me. I always reference to this um, um, scenario because it, it always surprised me that I actually did it. So the client came with me with a picture. It was a Lilo and Stitch stitch. He's like, can you make this? I'm like, no, I look like a printer to you. So then I'm like, it's challenging. I found a basic pattern of a stitch and then I had to tweak the pattern to go with the picture. When I was finished with the toy, I myself was shocked. But then when I showed him or I gave him the stuff, it was like an instant glow. He was really excited and it went on his dashboard. And up to this day, I think it was about two, three years ago that I did it. And up to this day, that little stitch is on his dashboard. So that is the reaction that m keeps me going. All right, all right. That's, that, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, mean, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people, people do it for the money, for the love, the love. But I have, I have myself, myself that once you've gotten to the point where it becomes, where it becomes, 
one's work. It's no longer as cathartic or as it's restful. It's no longer as, as cathartic or as restful as it could be. And then you take longer to make the piece. True, true, very true. True, but so, um, very true. But if um, you had one piece of if advice, you had one piece of advice to a person who was considering opening their own opening stock here, here, what would it be? What would it be? It would be definitely listen to your heart and go for what you want. It is not going to be easy when it comes to the financial aspect of it. A lot of people think that opening a business is just, hey, business, start. No. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, of, um, a lot of holes in the road. You just have to take your time and get your thing going. Yes, you will feel disappointed and, and you know, you feel like you don't want to do it, but you have to push through it. I've been through that a lot and I've had to push through it. And one thing that pushes you more is a good support system. May it be your friends, may it be your partner, may it be your family. That good support system gets you to where you need to go. And you have to also try to push yourself because it's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it, especially if you love what you're doing. Hmm. So where do you see so yourself, where do you see yourself, yourself business? Business? Are you planning to, to grow be honest with you, or expand, or online? expand online? To be honest with you, I love that it is locally. Um, I have gone international. I have some pieces that have traveled. But I want more people to get into it here. I want the classic crochet to become fun. So that's one of the reasons why I teach it also. So I teach it in a way that it's fun. So if you like to do purse, you stick with purse and you do it. But with my business, as I said, I just want more people to get into it. If I could get like mm -hmm. 10 people locally to make toys, whew, my job would be so much easier. Don't get me wrong. There are some persons that I have seen online on Facebook on buy and sell that I've seen that make toys. Mm. But it's just a lot of people don't see it as toys. They see it as crochet. So mm. if about 10 mm. people in Antigua would do the toys and do it with the intricacies that I do them, you know, with the detailing so that you can get that expression or that feel feedback from people. Mm. That would be my goal right there. It would probably also make it easier to get it materials because if more people are doing it, more people will import it. Also and make then it easier easy. to get materials because if more people are doing it. That's the thing. And a lot of people have told me in terms of material, why you don't bring in your material and sell them? But it's not as easy as that. I Trust. tried it one time Trust. and it was definitely not beneficial to me because mm. the cost of bringing it in and all them things, it's, it's just tough. Yeah. yeah. But I think if more people were yeah. to get into it, yeah. it would be easier. Very much easier. And I look Very forward to a time easier. when you can yeah. be back. And I look forward to a time when library. you can be back to teaching at the public library. I'm looking forward to that too. As I said, there's a lot of people looking forward to do it. Right before the COVID happened, I had an ongoing class and like right now my students like, can we do online cl classes and stuff like that? But I'm like, crochet is more of a hands-on, face-to-face thing. I can't see if you make a mistake by you doing this because like right there, everything looks awesome and well organized mm -hmm. and then yeah. there might just be a problem somewhere between yeah. there so I, I can't do it online i would love to you know mm -hmm. even like sometimes when i'm learning something new on youtube mm -hmm. it's like i have to repeat 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 the video and i would have to like zoom in to see exactly you know what they're doing mm -hmm. but i hope we could start back the classes sometime soon when all this craziness goes away Yes, because yes, I keep telling I keep people, people, if you want if to you learn, want go to, to learn, the public library and see Miss Desi and see Miss Desi. <laughs> I've been neglecting yeah. all, of my, been all of my potential students. I know, right? 
Yeah. But again, we just want to say thank you so but much again, for we just coming say out. Thank you so much for coming out, with expertise and, and understanding, expertise and understanding, and understanding and this practice. I'm sure all of our viewers were very happy. Our viewers were very happy to have the opportunity to, you know, talk to you. No, talk to you. Not one hundred percent sure if we have. Not one hundred percent sure if we have any chats. Let me check. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Yes, sorry about that. Apparently I got cut. The doesn't like me today. Doesn't like me today. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. But you know, but, we just wanted know, we to just thank wanted you for to coming in and sharing and us. sharing with us. Thanks for having me. I know me. It, you have a very and busy schedule. I know it, you have a hmm? very busy schedule. And so we just wanted to and say so thank we just you. Wanted to say and to our viewers out there, I'd like to say join us again next week and when we will have viewers out there, I'd like to say join us again next week when we will have Lawn Salmon. Bye. Bye. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> That's cute though. That's cute How much though. is that? Thank How you. This one is 80. It's one of these toys that kids hold by the ear and drag all the way around. It's a plushy toy. It's Ooh, like you can nice. see it's just Ooh, soft. That, that's nice. Yeah. It's a so. nice little floppy. Yeah. It's a nice little floppy. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh dear. Where's oh Miss Hunt? Where's Miss Hunt?